Praise the Lord today, saints of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, I thank you today for this word that you've placed in my heart, O oh God. I bless you and praise you and thank you, God. And I pray that you will so anoint it to touch the hearts of your people today for encouragement, for admonition, for rebuke, for reproof, and all long suffering. Father, that you will instruct us in all righteousness. Let us see from the example of your word, Lord, what you have written down for our example. That we know, Lord, beyond a shadow of a doubt, as we've entered into your rest, into the rest of Jesus, the finished work of the cross, each day, that you flow through us and you bring us to the end of the way. Lord, I pray that you will crush every demonic force that tries to hinder this word from taking root in our hearts and bearing fruit a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. The two witnesses. Now this is, the Lord, last week we were speaking about abiding and resting in the Lord and the warfare that takes place as we're walking in this pilgrim land and we're fighting principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places, okay, in the heavenlies and and in our minds, I mean, our reasons, you know, the way we think, the way we grew up and were conditioned by society to think a certain way, this all is being changed by the Holy Spirit where we are no longer relying upon the way we think but upon the way the Lord thinks. Hallelujah. We want to think God's thoughts. We want to be a transmitter for God's thoughts and God's action and God's way. Hallelujah. The Almighty God. We want to be faithful witnesses unto His truth today. And it only comes by surrender and letting the Lord have His way with us and that is a lifelong process of learning each day because there's more and more uh, that the Lord wants to do in us and through us in this earth to, and the people around us, the people we're associated with on the internet, um, our families, just everywhere we go, work, whatever, the job that you work on, you work at, you know, the things we do around here where we live, God wants to use us as witnesses for his truth. Now, the two witnesses is a, is a, is a multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar industry, okay? They've made lots of money on the two witnesses in the mentioned in Revelation chapter 11. Now, I'm not going to go there today. Maybe later in the week we'll get into that. But today, the Lord wants us to remember that he calls us his witnesses. It says in the book of Isaiah chapter 43... Chapter 44, we are his, his witnesses, hallelujah, today. Jesus sent the disciples out two by two. The Bible says that every truth is established by two witnesses, two or more witnesses. Jesus said, I am one witness and my father is the other witness, hallelujah. In other words, I'm speaking to you the truth and here's my father, watch him, heal this blind man through me, see. This is a witness. This is this is a fact that I am the living God, Jesus was saying to the Pharisees. Read John chapter 8 today. There's a good homework assignment. And you see Jesus pinning the Pharisees to the wall with their falsity, you know, showing them that they are of their father the devil. Because they don't believe the truth. They don't believe who Jesus said he was. And he and his father were bearing witness to that. Hallelujah. And what we want to speak about today, we're going to speak about is the fact that there are two witnesses in the Old Testament, first of all, that speak of a certain event that we know is coming, the catching away of the saints, okay? This is going to happen one day soon, we believe soon. The early church, they had the same hope in them that we have today. Come, Lord Jesus, Maranatha. This was their hope. This was the hope of George Mueller, Charles Spurgeon, 
All the saints of old had this hope in them by the Holy Spirit crying out, Come, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And this is the hope that we have today. Let me tell you a story. Back in 2003, we were on the shortwave radio preaching the gospel. We had 42 broadcasts that we did on shortwave. They were hour-long broadcasts. Sharon and I both were preaching, and it was very intense broadcast. Every one of them are relevant for today. And, well, I need to mention this because it just dropped in my, in my spirit. We did one broadcast, which was a communion broadcast. And we had communion on the broadcast. And we might do that someday here as the Lord leads. And that's the only broadcast that we didn't have a copy of. That we, it, was, it was so awesome, that, that, that broadcast. But anyway, we, we had the broadcast going. And, and we met a man who communicated with us from, from up in the Northeast. And uh, I think he was from Rhode Island or Massachusetts or somewhere like that. But anyway, he, he, the Lord would not let him sleep one night. And the Lord woke him up and said, you need to get them this lantern. So the, he bought us this, this uh, the world's brightest lantern, it's called. And it was just a beautiful lantern. It had a mantle in it, and it would work on mineral spirits or paint thinner or, you know, kerosene and it was just totally awesome. Let me tell you, this is kind of a lengthy little story, but let me try to get it to the point I want to get to. Anyway, we got the lantern, and the first lantern they delivered was cracked. It had a crack, and it wouldn't hold pressure, so we had to send it back. And so they sent another lantern out, and we got the lantern, and I, I believe, I don't think we had to send that one back, but there was... I was trying to light the lantern and I couldn't get it lit. It took us both to first time. Both of us had to work on the lantern to light the lantern. You had to light the little pre-lighter and all this other stuff. So it took two of us to light this lantern. Hallelujah. Now that's something the Lord is speaking right now. See, two witnesses. Hallelujah. Establish the truth. If you're by yourself today where you are, you're, you're sitting in your home or you're, you're, you just don't have nobody. Maybe you live in an apartment today and you don't have anybody around you who believes like you do, I mean, someone you can just reach out and give a hug to, okay? Hey, listen, you have the Holy Spirit. He is the second witness, hallelujah. You're the first and he's the second. Don't be afraid to speak what he tells you to speak to those he tells you to speak to because he's going to back up what you speak, hallelujah. He's going to give a witness to that person that, that you are of God, hallelujah. <clears throat> now, Sharon and I, the Lord put us together in 95. Anyway, this is about the year 2003 when this is happening, what I'm telling you. And we got this lantern lit. And the sun was setting. Okay? And I put the lantern up on a pole. And big lantern had a big old shield on it. We still got it. It's, it's a nice lantern. Beautiful. Nickel plated. And as the sun was setting, saints, that lantern got brighter and brighter and brighter and and i think sharon even made the comment she she said "Ooh, as it's getting darker it's getting brighter the lantern is getting brighter see the lantern represented us the lantern represents us we're supposed jesus said we are the light of the world hallelujah oh praise god i didn't even know i was going to say this today hallelujah look as it gets darker gross darkness is out there in the world it says in isaiah okay Gross darkness. Let me go there. I'm going to read that in Isaiah. Oh, praise God. I believe it's Isaiah 60. Might be Isaiah 61. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. It says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Isaiah 60, verse 2. And gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. Hallelujah. As it gets darker out in this world. 
As we see all these nations in perplexity and, and they're, they're fixing to try to unleash this big gigantic world war to wreak havoc on the earth and try to kill everybody on the face of the planet. That's the devil's plan, you know. His plan is to kill everybody on the face of the planet so he can prove God out to be a liar. But Jesus Christ said he's going to cut it short. And if he didn't cut it short, no flesh would survive. No animal, no man would survive if Jesus doesn't cut it short. He's going to cut it short. Hallelujah. We know this. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is our blessed hope. So as it got dark, that lantern was shining bright. And Sharon said that about as it gets darker, look how much brighter it's getting. And so the Lord showed us by that, that as it gets darker out in the world, we're going to begin to shine more brightly. Hallelujah. See, as the Lord Jesus is perfected in us, the more he's perfected in us, his presence is going to shine forth through us. Oh, hallelujah. Now, we know for a fact that the Bible speaks about these, it, these issues of when the rapture takes place and all this. I'm not going to get into that today, okay? We believe when Jesus comes back, that those who are dead in Christ, as it says in the book of 1 Thessalonians 4, will come out of the ground. Hallelujah. And then we which are alive, hallelujah, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what it says in the word. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Today I want to speak about, the Lord wants me to tell you about two witnesses in the Old Testament. We're going to speak about two witnesses, two sets of two witnesses, okay? We're going to speak about, first we're going to speak about <clears throat> Enoch and Elijah. Now this is the most common uh, two witnesses that they preach about and say are the two witnesses that are coming to the earth because Moses, I mean, uh, Enoch and Elijah didn't die, okay? We know they didn't die a physical death. And the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and after death the judgment. So they have to come back and die, okay? And this is the, the logic that they're using, but they're forgetting 1 Thessalonians 4, which says, We which are alive and remain... Hallelujah. In other words, there's going to be a body of believers on the earth when Jesus comes back who are not going to die a physical death, but we are going to be changed. Hallelujah. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Glory to, ke to the King Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm getting ahead of myself. Praise God. Now this gives us great hope. Enoch and Elijah, look what it says here in Hebrews 11. Now faith. Oh, hallelujah. I love that word faith. Speaks to me of obedience. Speaks to me of rest. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence. The fact that you have faith, that's the evidence of the things you don't see yet. Hallelujah. For by it, by that faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Oh, hallelujah. Great mystery there, isn't it? By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated. Hallelujah. He was translated that he should not see death. Oh, praise God. And was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him oh hallelujah we're going to be speaking about this this week listen to this by faith enoch was translated where was he translated to 
He was translated to heaven. Hallelujah. Do you think he got a glorified body when he got there? Or did God just kind of have to stick him in the closet? Okay. And let's, let's wait a couple of eons here before I got to send you back to earth so you can die. But yet there's going to be a people alive who are not going to taste physical death. We're going to be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. See, I believe they're teaching falsely about these two witnesses. And I believe that, that, that they're going to try to bring some kind of blue beam thing into play and make it look like Enoch and Elijah are coming. Make it look like Jesus Christ is coming. So we have to know in our heart. We have to have the, the understanding and the spirit in order to be able to stand against these shenanigans. This Hollywood stuff they're going to try to pull on the masses of the world to deceive people. And another of the two witnesses of the Old Testament is who? Elijah. Elijah. Hallelujah. He was caught up in a, in a whirlwind in a chariot. Shoom, a chariot of fire. And took him up to heaven. Hallelujah. You think his form was changed? His visage was changed? Oh, hallelujah! I believe he was changed. And I do not think the literal Elijah, because they said in the scripture, it says that it was like Elijah's going to come back. And Jesus identified that man, and that was John the Baptist. Now, today there are people who operate in the same spirit and power of Elijah because it is the power of God. It is the spirit of God that Elijah operated in. Hallelujah. And today there are men and women. I know a lot of men don't like to hear that, but that's the fact of the truth of the scripture. There's no male and female with the Lord in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's not going to be no marriage in heaven. They're going to be given in marriage. That's for down here in this time. Hallelujah. But in the spirit, there's no male and female. But we know the proper order recorded in the scripture. But how many churches today in India? How many churches today in China where there ain't no man to lead but women? God, right, God comes upon the women to lead. Hallelujah. See? And I will say that God does an excellent job of it. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. If you're a woman of God out there today, don't sell yourself short because you're a woman. You speak what God tells you to speak. You do what God tells you to do. Hallelujah. If you're married, you be submissive to your husband in everything except sin. Hallelujah. And God honors that, see. Two witnesses, Enoch and Elijah. They are the witnesses of the fact that there's going to be a people on this earth at the time of the setting up of the eternal kingdom of our almighty God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will not die. Hallelujah. And we pray to be two of those people. Oh, praise God. We said this before, and I will say it again. Today, we are the temple of the Lord. The Bible teaches us this. God does not dwell in buildings made with hands. He dwells in clay vessels, and we are those vessels today. And as Solomon was in building the temple, the literal temple, as Solomon was building it, inside the sanctuary of the temple, there was no sound of a tool to be heard of iron. There was no clanging sounds. There was nothing to identify what was going on, okay? They were putting all the beams up. They were putting the blocks in place. There was no cutting of the stones. The stones were all cut before they were brought to the site. It was, it was like silence. And today we are the temple. And there are things happening in our spirit, man, that the Almighty God, by the Holy Spirit and the precious blood, is doing in us that we do not know about. And as Samson was a judge of Israel, God calls us to make a right judgment. And as Samson was just walking down the road, so to speak, the Spirit of the Lord would come upon Samson, and Samson would begin to do things that if the Spirit of the Lord didn't come upon him to do, he couldn't do it. And I believe it's going to be similar to that. And this time that we are in, it, it's like the Holy Spirit's just going to absolutely show forth through us his mighty power because he already possesses us 
You hear a lot of talk in the church today about the devil possessing people. That person is possessed by the devil. That person has a demon. This person has a demon. Blah, blah, blah. You hear a lot of talk about that. What about being possessed by God? See? See, we are possessed by God as Christians. As true believers filled with the Holy Ghost. We're, we're possessed by the Almighty God. Hallelujah! And as we surrender the Almighty God in us, He shows us. He reveals to us stuff in the old nature that ain't maybe quite dead yet that he wants to get to. Hallelujah. And we surrender that to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we see from the Old Testament, Enoch and Elijah, two men of God who walked with God. And then Elijah came and appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. Oh, beautiful sight that must have been for Peter, James, and John to see. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. We want to see the Lord, you know. We, we have a heart cry as His people today to see Him. But when I say that, it, it just puts a terror on me, a, a fear, because He's so holy. But yet He's perfecting us. He's, we're in the way with Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let us always bear witness to that fact. Now, there's two more witnesses in the Old Covenant the Lord was showing me last week. He wants me to, he reminded me this morning, and that is Caleb and Joshua. Okay, Caleb and Joshua. We talked last week about the book of Joshua and about Jericho marching around. Now, you see, Caleb and Joshua, oh, hallelujah. Two men of God. They came out of Egypt. Look at all of the people who are saved today out in the world. Who, who are filled with the Holy Spirit and saved. They, they say that they're saved. They say that they have had an experience with Christ. And they've accepted Christ as their Savior. And that they're filled with the Holy Spirit. They say they're born anew. But yet we look at the state of the church in America. Just take America, okay? And let's just say the Western nations. And we see this man organization where people are absolutely stifled. It's like man's organization is just putting a bushel basket over the fire. Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. This is what Jesus told us. No man lights a candle and then puts a bushel basket over it. He said, you put it on a candlestick for all to see so that it lights up the whole room. Hallelujah. But man's organization is like a bushel basket coming down. And so you have all these Christians who profess faith and they, they say they've come out of Egypt. Okay. And then God says, now go in and possess the land. God says, go in and possess. And they and, and this is this is going to be by the cross. They got to go across the Jordan, and Jordan River speaks of the cross. And the people don't want to hear about the cross. They don't want to hear about self denial. For the most part, you don't hear it preached. Because if it was preached, the world would be upside down again. Hallelujah. And today, Caleb and Josh will speak to us of the enduring unto. The end. Oh, hallelujah. The enduring unto the end. They are two witnesses that we, those of us who are walking with the Lord, taking up our cross daily and following him, denying ourselves, those of us who are doing this, those of us who are seeking the Lord, and it's all by his grace. It's not, nothing that we've done. We know that in our flesh dwells no good thing. Hallelujah. We know it. We know it. And we cry out to the Lord, Lord, put the fear of God upon me. Lord, put your fear upon me. Let me walk in the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. And fear only you. Hallelujah. Because when we fear only the Lord, and I've prayed this for many years, just to have the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's the beginning of knowledge. Hallelujah. It's the beginning of wisdom. Hallelujah. Fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Oh, hallelujah. 
Caleb and Joshua, they were two of the spies, and they went out and spied out the land. And we pick up the story in Numbers 14. And all the congregation lifted up their voice. All the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And therefore, and wherefore, verse 3, And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. Now here is a people, saints, this is like two years after they came through the Red Sea. Two years? They don't remember coming through the wall of water on the right hand and on the left. They don't remember that God sent the ten plagues upon Egypt and yet they were safe and secure in their homes. And the three days of darkness, it was so dark you couldn't see in front of your face. And it was all over Egypt, but they had light in their dwellings in Goshen. They can't remember this. They can't remember the, the bitter waters of Marah. They can't remember Moses striking the rock and the water gushing out. They can't remember the manna from heaven. It's just two years. And they're crying out to go back to Egypt. And how far into this great sorrow, when, when war breaks out in the streets of America, how long will it be before the people who profess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, but their heart right now is far from him. Will they be? They will be like these people in the wilderness, see? And they'll be trying to come after the Caleb's and the Joshua's. Yeah, those who are standing and going right now and possessing the land. But we're going to stand strong and faithful to the Lord by his grace. Hallelujah. And it's all by his grace through faith. Oh, praise God. Do you see where this message is going? Listen to this. And they spake unto the company. Hallelujah. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their face. Verse 5. I love this too. Because this is how God wants us to be as his witnesses today. Like Moses and like Aaron. Like Caleb and like Joshua. Listen to what. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of of Israel. Now we have this image in our mind. They got down on their face and we see it when they make the movie Moses, you know, with Ben Kingsley or with Charlton Heston, or we see them going down their face and then they get up. You know, this was for 40 days, for 40 days. Read the book of Deuteronomy. 40 days. Hallelujah. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the, of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey only rebel not ye against the Lord neither fear ye the people of the land for they are bred for us their defense is departed from them listen to their confidence now listen to their faith hallelujah their defense is departed from them and the Lord is with us fear them not hallelujah See, we're not to fear all these giants out in this land today. Hallelujah. With all their steel and all their, their firepower. And all. Don't fear all that. Those are the giants today. Don't fear any of that, saints of the Most High God. No, no, no. Uh-uh. Oh, praise God. Let me read verse 9 again. 
Only rebel not ye against the Lord. See? See, if we fear man, we're rebelling against the Lord. We really are. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stone. Now this is almost like a million people, or a little more. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have showed among them? I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. God is telling Moses, hey, listen here, Moses. You see these people? They're making me so mad right now. I'm, I'm getting very angry at them. Because they, they despise my grace. They despise my power. They despise my ability to keep them strong in the race. To keep them safe and sound. And they keep wanting to run to man. They keep wanting to run back to Egypt. If you're one of those today, you're hearing this, and you have a tendency to run back to Egypt, God says, stop it. God says, stop it and repent and turn to him. Run unto him. Hallelujah. God says, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. Oh, you know, Moses, he was the meekest man, wasn't he? He was so humble. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. Now, if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them. Therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, I beseech thee, Moses interceding. This is another thing we've prayed for, to have an intercessor's heart like Moses did. And like Jesus did. Like Paul did. Hallelujah. And the Lord says to us, we do have that. We do have that intercessor's heart. It's just, are we exercising that intercessor's heart? Because people need prayer today. I'm telling you, this church of America needs prayer today. Hallelujah. Verse 16 again. Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them. Therefore he had slain them in the wilderness. And this is Moses speaking. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great. According as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering. He's reminding God. See, we have to remind God many times, hallelujah, in this walk. Hallelujah, the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. I have pardoned according to thy word, Moses. 
God says, I love you so much, Moses, I pardon these people according to thy word. Hallelujah. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Hallelujah. Caleb. And we know Caleb and Joshua were the two that went across from this whole group of people that came out of Egypt with Moses and Aaron and Miriam and all the whole nation came out. Moses died in the wilderness. Aaron died in the wilderness. Miriam died in the wilderness. And everyone that was 20 years old and upward died in the wilderness. They did not go across the Jordan except Caleb and Joshua. And this is two witnesses in the Old Covenant that today, saints, we are going to persevere and we're going to make it to the end because our faces are set like flint to do what the Lord tells us to do. Amen? Jesus is bringing us to the end of the way and we know it. See, the Scripture says we have the witness, hallelujah, within ourselves that we have eternal life. John wrote 1 John so that we would know that we have eternal life. That we have it right now. And because we do have it and we are possessed of God, we're going to make it to the very end. Hallelujah. However long that is. However long it is. We know there's 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 news stories right now about Russia and China and America you know, they're, they're ratcheting up the, the propaganda about this big war fixing to take place. World War III, they call it. I'm telling you right now, our God's in control of all this. God is going to absolutely shake down and crush down all of this man-built Christianity. He's going to absolutely destroy it the world wide over. Whatever man has built is going to come tumbling down to the very foundation which is Christ Jesus he is the foundation and people have built churches on things other than Christ they build it on fame they build it on recognition they build it on vanity they build it on jealousy they build it on whatever there's people that go to these churches and they're they're a part of a church and then they'll get jealous of somebody in the in the leadership of the church. They'll get jealous of them. So they go start another church somewhere else. And drag 20 or 30 people with them. And they begin to have a fellowship. And the same thing keeps repeating itself. And you have this man's organization. And very little of it. Is truly led by the Holy Spirit. And you, you find out that. When you go try to preach. When you go preach the truth of the cross to them. It touches their idol. And that's when they buck up against you. But sometimes the Lord calls us to do that. And we must be obedient to the Lord. Not fearing anything about what's going to happen to us. Caleb and Joshua. They made it in to the promised land. They endured to the very end. They are two witnesses that we will endure. This wilderness that we are in. Hallelujah. We're going to endure it. We're going to endure it. We're going to endure it. Hallelujah. We saw a message yesterday by a dear brother that was sent to us by a dear sister. And and uh, awesome message about when we are weak, then are we strong. And he was talking about how, you know, as it gets closer to the end. Now, this person believes in a pre-trib rapture. But, you know, hey, listen. I don't divide over that issue. People that, that believe in that divide over that issue. I don't. Okay. We believe that we're going to be raptured when Jesus comes. Okay. 
And we also know that people can twist the scriptures to say anything they want them to say. We say to people, we say, believe the word. Believe what the word says. Okay? Don't try to make up a scenario or a teaching about it. But anyway, this brother was saying that as we're, you know, as it gets the pressures building, okay, and even T. Austin Sparks talks about this is going to be everything we, we need, you know, can do to just to stand. To stand. But we're going to stand because the one in us is greater than the one that's in the world. Hallelujah. So we are going to stand. Hallelujah. We are going to make it in. We're, we're going to be like Caleb and Joshua. Hallelujah. We're going to be alive when Jesus comes. Hallelujah. We believe that. And we're crying out, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. So be encouraged today, okay? Be encouraged today. Now, if you're one of those and you don't you don't really believe that you need to take up your cross and follow Jesus, you, you did that when you, you got saved and you put your sins on the cross and now you can go live your life the way you want to. Listen. Verse 24 of Numbers 14. <coughs> but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit, with him and hath followed me fully. See, you got to follow the Lord fully. Okay. Him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings. Of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which ye have murmured against me, which have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell. Therein, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. See, they were the only two God said they're going to make it in. Because they, why? Because they had a, a right spirit. They had a spirit of confidence. They had a spirit of faith and belief in God and trust in the Lord. Don't trust in your horses and your chariots, the scripture says. Don't trust in your material things, says the Lord. Trust in the living God. The one who surpasses all material things. I mean, God created the atom. I mean, God made everything of, out of everything that doesn't appear, saints. I mean, this is a mystery. This is so awesome. Our God that we serve, the holy, holy, holy God. Hallelujah. He says, I can bring you in. Will you let me? I say, yes, Lord. Let, yes, I'll let you. And then as we're going along the way, it starts getting real tough. And we kind of go, Lord, uh, you know, uh, uh. and we all do it. But he says, do it less. Trust me more. Hallelujah. That's what he says. Don't be like the children in the wilderness any longer. If you know people, you're hearing this today, that struggle and they're, 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 they're more in Egypt than they are, you know, in the promised land. They're, they're more concerned about, give them this message. Because I'm telling you right now, things are going to get tough out there in the world. And the tendency is going to be to run to Egypt. The tendency is going to be to, to, to flee to man, to go to man, because you can see it. You can hear it. You can taste it with your, with your physical senses. And God says, no. Trust me. God says, I will be a light upon your dwellings by night and a cloudy pillar by day. Hallelujah. God says, I will protect you. I will keep you. I will feed you. Your water shall be sure. Hallelujah. This is the word of God, the promises in God's word. You trust in the living God and watch God do mighty exploits through you, in you, upon you. Hallelujah. Watch God deliver on the right hand and on the left. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this word today, and I bless you, God. I so bless you and thank you, Father. Thank you for the two witnesses that we have, Lord, recorded for us 
in the Old Testament, Lord, in the in the book of Genesis, with Enoch being translated, hallelujah, and was no more, and Elijah taken up in the fiery chariot, hallelujah, in a whirlwind. These are the two witnesses that will, there will be a people on this earth who will not die. There will be a people, you have a people right now on this earth that will not taste physical death, hallelujah. They will not taste it, hallelujah. Because you're going to come, hallelujah. You're coming, Lord Jesus, oh hallelujah. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. And when you come, those who are asleep in you, as the scripture says, will rise first. Hallelujah. Then we which are alive and remain shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And we will rise up, hallelujah, with them together and meet you in the clouds, Lord, and, and be with you forever with glorified bodies. Oh, God. Oh, Lord Jesus, come. Come today, Lord, and visit us. Come today and visit your people today with your sweet spirit. With your loving spirit, Lord Jesus. Come with your instructing spirit. Teach us today, Lord, what we need to see. Bless all those who hear this, Lord. Let this word penetrate their hearts and go deep, deep, deep down, Lord. Take deep root for each day to come, Lord, in this day as well. And crush every demonic force that tries to hinder it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praise the ever-living God. Hallelujah. You can write us if you desire. Behold a new thing at yahoo.com. Behold a new thing at yahoo.com. Also look on this message and there's links there for our blogs and all the other sites that we have. We have YouTube channels and we also have Facebook and and uh, Weebly and all sorts of blogs. And, and uh, my wife just works absolutely the Lord has taught her fingers how to war. Hallelujah. And it's just beautiful to see. I get to see it every day. And uh, the Lord said, feed the sheep. He told us that back in 2000. Uh, when we did our first shortwave broadcast in 2000. And then we did another one in 2003. And then we got on the internet in 2007. Did a short uh, internet radio broadcast. And, and then we began on YouTube ministering to the world and so people all around the world all around the world are, are hearing the broadcast hallelujah and we're so thankful to the lord and the lord's done it all i mean the lord has done it all hallelujah and still doing it he is the faithful creator hallelujah and he has created us to speak forth his truth and to love one another to bless one another and this is what we do so check out those blogs there to be listed on this message the Lord bless you, keep you, make his holy face to shine upon you. The Lord our God lift up his holy countenance upon you and grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you and fill you with all of his fullness today. Oh, hallelujah. May his name, his authority, character, and dominion be upon your life today. And walk in the fullness today because the Lord possesses you. When you're born anew and filled with the Spirit, he possesses you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to the King. Have a blessed day. Hallelujah in the Lord.